Welcome to Medically Speaking, a podcast for your good health from the University of Maryland Medical Center and the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore. If you have heartburn more than twice a week, a nagging dry cough, especially at night, or chronic sore throat, you might have a condition known as gastroesophageal reflux disease, or GERD. What is GERD? What causes it? And what can you do about it? I'm Karen Warmkessel, and my guest today on Medically Speaking is Dr. Bruce Greenwald, a gastroenterologist at the University of Maryland Medical Center and a professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. Thank you for being with us today, Dr. Greenwald. Thanks for having me. First, can you explain for us what GERD is and what causes it? GERD, or gastroesophageal reflux disease, refers to the movement of stomach contents and acid from the stomach up into the esophagus. It occurs when the sphincter muscle, which works like a valve at the bottom of the esophagus, doesn't work properly, so the contents of the stomach can move up into the esophagus or the swallowing tube. The acid in the stomach burns the lining of the esophagus, and typically that causes heartburn. Is heartburn the most common symptom? Yes, it is. So heartburn is the most common symptom of GERD, but GERD can have other manifestations or symptoms as well. Some people just feel a burning pain in the area just below their breastbone, around the stomach area. Others may have no heartburn at all, but may have hoarseness of the voice, the sense of a cotton ball in the back of their throat, chest pain, voice changes, cough, wheezing. All of these things, although possibly due to other causes, can in fact be caused by GERD. Who's most at risk for developing GERD? Does obesity play a role? Yes, yeah, so obesity or being overweight is probably one of the greatest risk factors for GERD for several reasons. People who are obese have more acid reflux, more GERD, probably because of the weight of the fat on the abdomen. How do you treat GERD? GERD is treated both through lifestyle changes and through medicine. The lifestyle changes tend not to be emphasized but can be very important. Losing weight is important if a person is overweight and what and how a person eats is also very important. What shouldn't you eat if you have GERD? Well, it's not so much about what should and shouldn't be eaten specifically, but how a person eats. So the amount of grease or fat in the diet should be decreased. A person also should not overeat. When the stomach is over full, acid is more likely to reflux into the esophagus. In addition, eating within three hours of bedtime is a bad idea, because when a person is laying flat in bed, there's a greater chance of acid reflux. So avoiding overeating, minimizing greasy and fatty foods, and not eating within three hours of bedtime are really three important things to do. Decreasing the amount of alcohol is also important because alcohol weakens that lower esophageal sphincter valve, and also decreasing tobacco are important. How do you treat GERD with medication? GERD treatment with medicine really depends on how severe the GERD symptoms are. A person who has only occasional heartburn can take antacids, and if the antacids work, that's fine. A person who has heartburn symptoms that last despite antacids may take an over-the-counter medicine, something called an H2 blocker. These are medicines such as ranitidine or famotidine, commercially called Zantac or Pepsid. However, if a person has regular heartburn symptoms, those on a more frequent basis, then we use a class of drugs called the proton pump inhibitors. These include drugs such as omeprazole or Prilosec, which is available over the counter, as well as prescription drugs such as Nexium, Prevacid, or Protonix. If you have GERD for a long time, does it lead to more serious conditions, including esophageal cancer? Yes, we know that one of the greatest risk factors for esophageal cancer is chronic heartburn. And the more significant the heartburn, both in severity and duration, the greater the risk of esophageal cancer. We believe that this is mediated through a condition called Barrett's esophagus, which is a change in the lining of the esophagus caused by the acid burning off the normal lining. If you have Barrett's esophagus, how serious a condition is this and and how do you treat it? Barrett's esophagus has no symptoms, so typically it's only found during upper endoscopy. In this procedure, a scope is passed through the mouth down into the esophagus, and we examine the lining. This is done with sedation, so a person is essentially sleeping during the procedure. We take samples or biopsies of the Barrett's esophagus. For most people, there's no precancerous change other than the Barrett's esophagus itself. In those cases, we treat the heartburn, 
and we also will perform endoscopy at intervals to continue taking biopsies to monitor for any significant changes. If a person has precancerous change in the Barrett's esophagus, something we call high-grade dysplasia, then we need to talk about other treatment options. These may include surgery to remove the diseased area of the esophagus or endoscopic treatments to destroy the Barrett's lining and allow healthy tissue to grow back. We can do this using very cold, called cryotherapy with liquid nitrogen, and we can do it with heat, something called radiofrequency ablation. In both of these treatments, we destroy the Barrett's lining, treat aggressively for acid reflux, and allow healthy tissue to grow back into the esophagus. If you have chronic heartburn or any of the other symptoms that you were talking about, when should you go see a doctor? I think anybody who has chronic heartburn should discuss this with their doctor. The severity of esophageal damage does not always correlate with the extent or severity of heartburn at a given time. So if a person has chronic heartburn now or has had chronic heartburn in the past, they need to mention it to their doctor. Many people who have Barrett's esophagus will give a history of severe heartburn 10 or even 20 years ago, but no heartburn symptoms now. We think that the Barrett's esophagus protects against the feeling of heartburn, but it doesn't protect against the risk of esophageal cancer. So anybody who has significant heartburn, meaning needing to take any medicines for it now or in the past, I urge them to discuss it with their doctor. And by significant heartburn, you mean if you have to take something for it? I think if you have heartburn more than once a week that you're taking anything for it, including in acids, it's worth mentioning to your doctor. They can talk to you about it and determine how serious your heartburn symptoms are and what sort of treatment or diagnostic test should be done. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Greenwald. I'm Karen Warmkessel, and I've been speaking with Dr. Bruce Greenwald, a gastroenterologist at the University of Maryland Medical Center and a professor of medicine at the University of Maryland School of Medicine. You've been listening to Medically Speaking, a podcast produced for your good health from the University of Maryland Medical Center and the University of Maryland School of Medicine in Baltimore. This podcast is meant to provide general information, not to replace your consultation with a personal physician about your particular health concerns. To reach a University of Maryland physician, call 800-492-5538. That's 800-492-5538. Or visit our website at www.umm.edu. Again, that address is www.umm.edu. Thanks for listening. We hope you'll join us for other Medically Speaking podcasts.